Good morning. It's good to be with y'all here on this Sunday morning for our worship time together. Uh, we are very sorry that we have to consider doing this on, on this basis. We we'll we're enjoy this time together, but it's certainly uh, a, a somewhat poor substitute for our ability to get together in person and worship. We wish we had better pictures to show you outside uh, uh, here. Uh, we were hoping that there would be a snow in our background, but apparently there's not. So we have received news uh, this morning that Caroline, our oldest daughter, is in Spartanburg, has got snow-covered ground and sent us some pictures. So we'll have to live vicariously through those pictures. <laughs> so I it guess. It's pretend real hard. Right, exactly. So, But we are thankful that you are joining us uh, this morning for worship. And we pray that you are safe and that you are blessed in, in the places that you find yourselves. We're going to uh, walk through several things here for, for our worship time together. Uh, we're going to have some announcements of, of upcoming events that are transpiring. This is only a temporary stoppage in the things we're doing as a church. and so. But we'll be back at it this week. And we're going to do some announcements. We're also going to have a, an extended prayer time and talk about some of the prayer concerns that are part of our uh, a, a part of our church life, and then we're going to have a little devotion uh, concerning the scripture that we're going to use use for today. But we are grateful that you are joining us, and and hope that you'll put in the comments. We don't know whether we'll be able to see them uh, or not, uh, but uh, that you're here and with us. And if you have prayer concerns or uh, prayer requests that you would not mind sharing publicly, you're welcome to do that. Excuse us, our cat has decided to get <laughs> get around the. Get around the uh, stand. We've got the camera on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if uh, but if you have those that you might might share publicly, that that's fine. We'll we'll see those afterwards and include them on our prayer list. Okay. Uh, we do have a, 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 again a number of things that are happening here at our church, and I wanted to highlight a few of those things for you. Uh, one is a reminder that our United Methodist men are sponsoring a fundraiser that's coming up uh, on February the thirteenth. That's Super Bowl weekend, and so they've decided to put together. A, uh, a, f a fundraiser for that that is a possibility for them to cook together and also for you to take home and have meals for Super Bowl weekend. Uh, they're going to have Boston butts that are for sale. Uh, those are $35 a piece cooked, of course. And then the sauce for those is $5. Uh, we're going to have pickup for that on February the 13th, but the tickets need to be purchased by next Sunday on January the 23rd. So we have an account of how many we need to purchase and, and put in place. Also, the United Methodist men next Sunday on the 23rd will have their uh, monthly uh, breakfast meeting, and that will be at 7 a.m., be down in the cornerstone room uh, there at the uh, western end of the church. So we'd love to have men of the church to be a part of that next Sunday. Uh, also, we have uh, our, our Wednesday Night Connections is beginning again uh, this coming Wednesday, and there's actually a couple of things that are part of, of this time together. Um, the Hebron Kids are going to be uh, doing something called Hebron Kids on Mission, and that's going to start at 6 p.m. on Wednesday night, and that gives them an opportunity to do stuff in-house and also out in our community uh, to be in missions for, for people uh, from, our from our church and from our community. Then at 6.30, we have uh, a couple of options for activity and study that are taking place. Uh, one is our yoga class will be starting over. Also, uh, we have uh, a women's study is going to be done by uh, Marianne DeWitt. Uh, um, and also, I will be doing a, a class called God on Display, which is actually an extended Lenten study. Uh, it will lead us all the way through through the week of, of Holy Week for Easter. And so that that will happen in the, in the uh, larger space in the uh, in the New Life Center. Uh, we are also going to have beginning at 5:30. We will have uh, dinner that's prepared for us. That will come in a to-go to-go box. Uh, the cost for those is listed on our, our in our bulletin and also on our website. And uh, you need to sign up for that. Uh, but we look forward to having that time together. We're trying to to kick that back off. This is the first time in quite a while we've been able to have supper together over at the church. So we uh, hope that you will come out and be a part of that. Oh, by the way, for my study, the uh, or for the study that I'll be doing, the God on Display, uh, cost for that uh, study for the materials is just $5. We, we are, uh, we're printing this off 
and I'll have it in, in a folder. So if you sign up for it, we'll take care of that uh, whenever whenever you come. We'll also have a Zoom component for that uh, Wednesday night study as well for that particular one. So if you want to sign up and be a part of that online, you're welcome to do so as well. Also, uh, we have been planning, Jared and Lauren Lee are, are hoping to lead a, a uh, trip to Israel coming up uh, uh, this summer. And the, there's an organizational meeting for that again, on, on or informational meeting for that on January the 27th, and that is at 7 p.m., and that'll be in the New Life Center as well. And then finally, our baby blessings is on the January the 30th. That will be in, in the uh, uh, service in the 845 and the 1115 service. And we'd love for you if you have uh, those that we we, we don't want to miss anybody. So if you have those who have new children in our, our, our church or in your families, we'd like to make sure we have the opportunity to recognize them for our baby blessings. All right. Uh, let's begin then our worship of God today with a prayer, with a, with a brief prayer, and then we'll, we'll move into our prayer concerns and prayer time. All right. Heavenly Lord, we're grateful that your presence has promised to be with us today. And that wherever we find ourselves, in whatever uh, place we find ourselves, uh, that we can gather together under the banner of Jesus Christ, that we can gather together in the presence and the power of, of your Holy Spirit, and so that we have both fellowship and we have worship together. And dear Lord, we're thankful for that today. We're thankful for the, the means that are possible for us to do this, even when we can't be exactly where we want to be, even when we can't uh, be uh, sharing together in a way that uh, that we really want to, that we have this means, dear Lord, of coming together in communion. And I pray that you will guide everything that is a part of our minds, everything is part of our hearts, everything is part of our lives for for this for this uh, brief time. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will will strengthen us in our communion with each other, spiritually speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. The um, I'm going to start with our prayer concerns. Um, we have, in, just in case there are those watching who do not know that, we have a prayer chain that goes out by email, sometimes a couple of times a week, maybe, whatever, whenever needed, that Al and Sharon Cromer do for us. And it's, it's a wonderful way to keep up. If you are not a part of that prayer chain, if you're not getting those emails, I think you can contact the church office and they'll help you with That's that. Correct. Is that right? Yeah, we'll so. There may be some link on the website. I don't know. But check those. If you don't see it on the website, then call the church office and, and they'll connect you. We um we all, Gerald and Debbie and Kevin and I, follow far behind um, Al and Sharon in keeping up with this stuff. And they um, they are so faithful. And um, we, we end up asking them what's going on more than the other way around. <laughs> and so we are thankful for their ministry. And um, so if you're not on that, please join it. But today I wanted to, to bring forward some prayer requests. If you have others, um, you can put them in the comments. I, we may see them, we may not, but if we don't, then we'll see them later and everybody else will certainly see them. Or if you have an update about any of these that we may not know about, then we'd ask you to um, um, add those in the comment section. Um, first, we have Judy Herring. Um, she is back in the hospital again. Um, so we want to keep her in our prayers. Um, we are, we give thanks today. Um, the Mathis family, the Pagets, Butler, Shreen, Frost, that whole crowd has, um, been dealing with COVID a second go around. And I think they're all better and, and improved. And so we are so thankful for that. I think they have had that in their family from the oldest to the youngest. Um, again, two rounds of that for them and, and all those who are, dealing with COVID. I know it's going around a lot. We've had it in our home and um, Caroline, Maggie and I have all had it as well. Um, but we are all better and so we pray for all those others who are suffering with it. And um, so be careful out there. Um, we also pray for G Jenny Lou Smith. Um, she's home and doing some better since she's gotten home. I think that was helpful to her. We pray for De Debbie Edelmeyer who's at Colonial Gardens. Um, Trisha Mathis, um, has been at LMC. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if she's returned to her assisted living um, or not. Sandy Chatton can help us with that maybe if she's on today. Um, we pray for Zach and um, Faye Smith and, and their daughter Daisy who cares for them and that they are staying with her right now um, and doing some better. Um, well, maybe a lot better, I guess, but still have a ways to go. Um, 
Linda and Conrad Cooper. Um, Linda is at MUSC with some infection following her back surgery. And so we pray for them. Um, we pray for Cindy Miles, who's a cousin of Carla Koenig. Um, and she works in a nursing home and she faces all that goes with COVID and quarantine and what that means in our healthcare system. So we pray for her and all our healthcare workers. And I would add to that our teachers and, and those who are, all those who are on the front lines of this. It yes. seems like we're having a second go around of it. Maybe milder, but still um, no less work for those who are in healthcare and, and again for teachers and those who are filling in for teachers. And it's a hard time. Um, Cindy Ma, I'm sorry, that's um, Linda Hayworth. We pray for her. Keep her in your prayers. And Linda Powell and her friend Johnny Coker. Um, Johnny's going to Charleston to find out a treatment plan for himself. Um, we are we continue to keep Trevor Hill, Mel Clark, um, Pat Hill's mother, all those in our prayers. Ron and Glenn Kiesler, um, who are um, both are in treatments um, ongoing, and so we keep in close touch with them and. Keep them in our prayers and uh, march it and Susie Harmon or Doodle as we know him, right? And uh, keep them in our prayers as they um, find out what's next in treatment for Doodle. And pray for Kitty Bass and um, Jan and Paul Harmon who are both doing well. Paul's doing some immunotherapy treatments and um, doing well. And then also um, we have on our prayer list Ken Colton. And I'm sure there are others. Um, Paula Hawkins. Paula Hawkins, yes. I left her off. We'll pray for Paula Hawkins as well and Carl, her husband, um, and all those who we have that we, we, we mention and who we haven't mentioned. And again, if there are others, please put them in our comments. If we don't see them now, we will see them later. Um, but now let's go to God in prayer and pray for these and, and all of us. And I wanted to start today's prayer with a psalm. So let's pray together. And I'm going to be reading from Psalm 148. Let's pray together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His host. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens. And you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deep. Fire and hail and snow and frost. Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle. Creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples. Princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Almighty God, we do indeed praise your name this day. And we are thankful for all the ways that your goodness is evident around us. We are thankful, God, even today for um, the weather that's outside that may be not so pleasing. But we are, we know that um, most of us in listening to this today have a, a warm place to be. And a, a, it may be even a warm cup of coffee beside them. So in that, we praise you, God. It reminds us, God, of um, to, to pray for those who don't have such things, those that might be cold today. And help us, God, if... if to, to lead us into those paths of those people so that we might be uh, um, in ministry to them in whatever way we can. But we pray for those, God, who don't have shelter on this cold day. And we are thankful for all the ways that you have provided for us. We are thankful, God, that you are always, you always keep your promises, that you do what you say you're going to do. God, sometimes this world fails us. This, our government fails us. Our hearts even fail us, God. Yes. Our minds fail us. We, we were not equipped um, to do the things that we know we should do. But God, we know that you never fail us. That you always keep your promises. That you're sure and you're faithful. And you always do that what you say you're going to do. And we thank you for that, God. And we 
I ask that you help us to rest in that promise. We pray for our church today. God, we're scattered today um, in our different homes. And we miss seeing our, each other's faces today. It's reminiscent of a time when we couldn't be together before last year. And we miss each other um, today. But God, keep our hearts bound together as one. Keep us um, uh, bound in your love and bound in, in your goodness. And thank you, God, for this way that we can um, we can worship together through Facebook and through um, social media. And we are thankful for that, God. God, I pray for those we've mentioned on our prayer list today. Um, for Judy and the Mappas family and Jenny Lou and Debbie and Trisha and Faye and Zach and Linda and Cindy and Trevor and Mel and Pat Hill and Pat Hill's mother and Ron and Glenn Kiesler and Doodle and Susie Harmon and Kitty Bass and the Harmons and, and Ken Colton and we pray for all those on our prayer list, God. And these these are family and um we we ask that you we know God that you know what they need even when we don't. You know what's best for them even when we don't. But we've got to pray above all for their your hand to be upon them and your peace to be within them. God forgive us for those times when we fail, when we sin against you. Um, we know we do so way too often. And we ask your forgiveness for that, God. And help us to always be willing to forgive those around us. For, to love each other and to protect each other and to always keep each other in prayer. And God, as we go through the rest of this service today, we ask that your, your spirit be within us and your spirit be with Kevin as he speaks. And open our hearts and our minds to what you would have us to hear today. In your holy and most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, sir. Okay. We um, I wanted to, to mention one thing uh, that I neglected to a moment ago, and that is that our uh, a significant portion of our youth are up at uh, in West yeah. Virginia. They're skiing today, uh, and we want to be in prayer for them that they get back home and uh, they'll be coming back tomorrow and uh, that they'll get safely home. They, uh, I was text messaging with Jared, uh, last night, uh, kind of checking on things and, and he, uh, talking to me about, uh, the stuff that was happening here, but he said it was supposed to be, they were supposed to get 12 inches, six to 12 inches of snow today. And the winds were going to be 45 miles per hour up there on the top of that mountain. <laughs> so they, so he, they may, they all may be sitting in by a fire drinking some cocoa or coffee this morning themselves. Um, but uh, let's do be in prayer for them that they will enjoy themselves, but also get home safely to us. Glad I'm not there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, scripture reading for today is uh, from Second Chronicles chapter seven verses uh, one through three. Uh, this is part of uh, our series called Fire that uh, we've been working through the, during the, the month of January. And this particular passage has to do excuse me, with the dedication of the temple uh, that Solomon has built for the Lord. So 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. I invite you to, to read along with me if you have your Bible open this morning. Uh, uh, and if you don't, uh, then I invite you to look this up after, after the service this morning. And uh, to look through it yourself, as by the way of background, uh, start reading. If you want to read it later, uh, uh, start at chapter 6 and where the prayer that uh, Solomon has made for the dedication of the, uh, of the temple. But this is the portion we're reading today. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they, ba they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and they worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I am a person who is uh, not easily impressed. Um, 
that's not because necessarily who I am. I guess I'm just just kind of, of, of dumb. I guess I, I reckon, but I, it, it takes a lot to really uh, um, impress me uh, about people, especially or or, or things, uh, people status and and those sorts of things. But about thirty years ago, I had a what. I think is to me uh, has always been a very odd experience, and uh, I had had an opportunity about thirty years ago to see Billy Graham uh, crusade up in Charlotte, uh, and been invited by some church people to go and to see that in the uh, Charlotte Panther Stadium that had been uh, newly built at that time, and so uh, we went in this place with I guess. Probably fifty to seventy five thousand people were in in that place, and uh we were uh, sitting way up in the nosebleed section uh when when uh, uh Billy Graham came in and I, I don't think I was prepared for the uh um, the reaction for myself about what it meant to to lay eyes on him uh, uh I was a bit overtaken by that, um, and I didn't anticipate that that was going to happen, and was a bit surprised at myself, it, but it it was one of the few times in my life that I've, I've really said, I'm, I'm glad I'm here, you know, in the presence of somebody. Now, I, I, I don't think that uh, uh, there's a, a particular holiness about Billy Graham, uh, uh, and I don't b believe, even though he's a great preacher and he, he did a, a marvelous work in all of his crusades and, and in all the ways he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus, but I don't think it, was, it had as much to do with the holiness that, or, or something that I was perceiving in him or the glory that I, I recognized about him, but rather the fact that I, I realized I was simply in the presence of something special. Um, and uh, like I said that was overwhelming to me and uh, g continues to be. I think that when I when I place that particular incident in the context of what it is that we've been reading here in Second Chronicles, however, that it is but a a, a small idea, a, a small uh, illustration of the the glory that has been made available to the priest and, and to the uh, and to the children of Israel at the dedication of the temple, and it just astounds me. Uh, in in some ways that uh, th that glory demonstrated itself so powerfully uh, f for them, uh, and, and I can't, it's, it's hard to for me to wrap my mind around what that what that would look like, what that would uh, seem like that the glory of 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 God is present with them, uh, and the power uh, of God is present with them in, in, in such an overwhelming way that. They have to have a response to that. It's it's undeniable, you know. It works beyond anybody's impression of what's going on. Works beyond anybody's uh, anticipation of what it is that they're seeing. And it's just, it's again, it's just overwhelming. And um, uh, the writer here at Chronicles just does a fabulous job of of, of kind of trying to tell us that. And the language, if you if you look back through those verses, the language. Is just full uh, of this 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 power. It's full of this this glory, and it's full of the idea of, of the only description of it is the fire that comes down from heaven, and that's a uh, a marvelous way uh, to to talk about it. I mean, it's one of the, one of the few ways that you can get out of anything that's close to what it means to have God's presence right before you. Uh, we've been talking a great deal of, of late. Um, about the fact that uh, um, so often it, it, it seems like that we take on a persona like I have in many times that the, the, the it's hard to impress, it's hard to see, it's it's hard to to realize what's going on, and, and so we don't avail ourselves to the the fact that God's glory, um, indeed, and His presence and His power and His fire. Uh, can somehow be demonstra demonstrated around us, and, and we're simply looking at different ways. We're looking in different directions. We're 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 looking for different explanations. We're we're looking for different things. We're we're focused on on uh, first this thing and, and and then that thing, and and not recognizing God's uh, real energy and God's real real presence, God's real power that's 
even all around us in, in, in so many ways. And um, that's a shame. And when it happens to me or when it happens to you too, but it's also indicative of the fact that, uh, that sometimes we, we choose to turn our backs upon it we, or, or, we turn, or we choose to, to not look upon the glory of God because we have a lack of understanding about the fact that that keeps us from recognizing that God is God and that we're not. Uh, and that's what needs to and that's what should change everything about us is 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 when we realize the power of of God around us and when we realize the power of God uh, through us and realize the power of God in us now let, let me let me move forward a little bit to, to describe exactly what, what I mean by that um, John uh, chapter 1 verse 14 uh, which is the basis for this uh, this series of sermons is says that the glory of God has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Now, saying that, God has given the full measure of his glory in the person of Jesus Christ, not in darkness, uh, as uh, uh, talks a little bit about here just before in chapter 6, not in darkness, not in cloud, not in smoke, not in a, a burning mountain that cannot be touched, not in all those things that did for Moses, uh, but God has revealed his glory in the person of, of Jesus Christ. And we've just come through a season in which we recognize that, that glory coming to us as a baby. And, and uh, uh, sometimes that can distract us for what, of what that means, that this is a powerful God at work in our midst. But, uh, but, but that's what we talk about when we talk about the glory of God being revealed in Jesus Christ and what it means for him to reveal himself in this way, to, to show us uh, the full extent of his power, of his might, and of his fire. Uh, of, of what it is that he does uh, so that we might have a, a new relationship with him and so that we might have a hope of, of an eternal life with him, which is just an astounding thing. Um, the, so the response we have to that is, is not to, or should be, not that we look at those things or are distracted by those things or try to think of Jesus in terms that we can domesticate him or, or in terms that we can control him, uh, but but rather in terms of the fact that here's the presence of God's with us and he is doing something among us that n nobody else can do. He's doing something, uh, he has done something among us that is the full demonstration of the glory of God for which there is no replication. There's no way, I can't do it, uh, Amy can't do it, you can't do it. Uh, we, we can't have anything other than a poor illustration, like I said, with in the presence of Billy Graham, there's, there's, everything's a poor illustration of what it means for the glory of God to be revealed in Jesus Christ. And when he does that, when he does that, there is only, or in, we, we come to grips with that, there's only one proper response to what that looks like. And now we go back to Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 7 in, in, uh, in verse 3. Um, when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of and the glory of the Lord in the temple or on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and they worshiped and they praised the Lord, saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. It, it's the it, it is a response of thankfulness. It is a response of humility. It is a response of worship and praise. As Jesus Christ has been the revelation of the glory of God in our midst, and we we'll say which there is no replication, there's nothing, nothing different. When we fully sense that and we fully put our eyes upon that, uh, yes indeed, that's an impressive thing to happen and will overwhelm us and what it means for God to have demonstrated his glory in such a way. And the proper response to that is worship of God and, 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 and praise of God. There's not, uh, um, there's not another way that that can be uh, recognized uh, fully, recognized well, 
without that worship and, and, and praise of God. I, I think I'm coming to, to the heart of, of this, what I think is demonstrated in, in this particular, these particular verses. And what we're, it, indeed, what we're trying to, to demonstrate in these, these series of sermons or series of scripture readings that we're dealing with this month is that uh, your worship, our worship, uh, our praise of God must be, or can be, and should be, a never-ending um, focus on the fact that, that God's glory is not only simply around us in some amorphous sense, but that glory has been dis demonstrated for us in, in the person of Jesus Christ. And that becomes a fountain for our worship and praise. Whether we're doing it, whether we're doing that worship, and praise in the house of the Lord or, or within a sanctuary, whether we're doing it in, in a temple where, where it's uh, a place where it's, where it's there, or whether we're doing it, uh, having worship in our home, or whether we're having worship uh, uh, outside, whether we're having worship amongst thousands of people, or whether we're having worship amongst um, a few friends. It, it, it makes no difference in in the numbers, it makes no difference in the space, it makes no difference in the in the place um, when the focus of, of that worship is the fact that we serve, we live under, and we recognize a, a great and powerful God who is giving us, who has provided for us a means for, by which we might have relationship with him and might have eternity with him. Praise God for that. Uh, and uh, praise God for the, the the possibility there is for us to uh, to to be at His feet. Uh, praise God for His for us to be in the, in the presence of His Spirit, in the presence of His power, and in the presence of His glory. Praise God that we're able to to feel that fire that comes from Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we thank you. That indeed that you join with us, or indeed you direct us to be in worship and in praise of you. And we thank you for this moment we've had to do so this morning. We thank you for the ways in which that worship and that praise will demonstrate itself around us as we look outside our window today, as we go about our business, as, as we do the things that are, are, are part of our day. Dear Lord, infuse each and every one of them, I pray, with a sense of your glory and also with a reminder of, of the work of Jesus Christ, which is the, the perfect demonstration of your glory. And I pray, dear Lord, then you will shape us by that and help us to be a people of worship and praise because of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we make this our prayer. Amen. Hope y'all have got your fuzzy socks on, ladies, and... And another cup of coffee coming at 11.15. Gerald and Debbie will be on live on Facebook. Um, and I think the um, YouTube's coming later. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right. We, we, are, we are recording uh, this uh, this morning, and it will be uploaded to YouTube uh, as soon as, as it possibly can be. It takes a little while for that to happen. We did not have the, the way to uh, simultaneously... Uh, 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 broadcast this on Facebook and YouTube from our houses. Uh, so uh, let those that you might know of that don't watch us on Facebook wonder where we're at this, uh, excuse me, that watch us on YouTube, don't know where we're at this morning, uh, let them know if you, if you will and can that it will be coming to YouTube as soon as it possibly can, all right? But do join, if it's will, for 11.15 uh, this morning uh, for uh, Gerald and Debbie will, will be with us for worship at that time. Right. And study your Sunday school lesson, whatever it was for today. <laughs> um, spend a little extra time on that. That's exactly right. Great day, <laughs> great day for that. God bless you. Y'all take care. And we look forward to seeing y'all in person as soon as we can. All right. Bye God bless you.